Uh, good evening. Welcome to the Mount Canaan Missionary Baptist Church Friday night Bible study. Uh, we are located at 500 East Marina Street, Pensacola, Florida. And we are so grateful to have you to join us tonight. Those who are watching us by Facebook Live or our church website or on our YouTube page. Again, we're grateful to have you to join us tonight. Uh, this evening, we ask that our, our church family will continue uh, to keep lifted up in prayer. Um, Brother Gregory Hall, Sister Willa Gitter, Sister Juanita Hartley, Brother Ag Frazier, Sister Ophelia Thurman, uh, Deacon Curtis Lown, Sister Bessie Johnson, Deacon Mose Lynch, and Sister Oda Smith there in Orlando, Florida, uh, Sister Grace Ross, Sister Essie Baldwin uh, in Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, Sister Marie K. Young, uh, Brother Melvin Young there in Houston, Texas. And Brother William Berry, Sister Matura Young in Houston, Texas. Brother Carl Bauer there in Houston, Texas. Sister Monique Glover uh, in Raleigh, North Carolina. And Brother Charles Smith uh, in Mobile, Alabama. Sister Frida Hudgett in Panama City, Florida. And uh, two of our senior uh, pastors of our city, uh, uh, Pastor Frank Jenkins, the pastor of the Mount Olive Missionary Baptist Church, and uh, the pastor, Dr. A.L. Durant, the pastor of the Macedonian uh, Missionary Baptist Church. For our bereavement, a great side service for Sister Tierra Gray, uh, the sister of uh, Sister Sabrina and Minister Robin Cumming, and the cousin of Sister Mary and Brother Ronald Wingate, and Sister Tierra and Brother uh, Chris Smith uh, will be held on this Saturday, uh, July 33rd at 11 a.m. in Panama City, Florida. So we ask that we'll keep that family lifted up in prayer. Uh, the home going service for Deacon Herbert Baldwin, uh, the former brother-in-law of Sister Cheryl Baldwin, and the uncle of Sister Tanisha Baldwin and her children and the cousin of the Young family uh, will be held on this Monday, August the 2nd at 9 a.m. at the St. Matthew Missionary Baptist Church in Quintet, Florida. Home going service for Brother Charge Knight, the cousin of the Young and Hall family, would be held on this Monday, August the second, at 11 a.m. at the Trachin Martin Fume Home Service, Fume Home. Uh, again, we thank you and uh, for joining us each week. Again, we are open every Sunday morning, uh, in person or virtual. Uh, beginning with our Sunday school at 9.30 a.m. and our morning worship at 11 a.m. Uh, and with our Bible study is every Friday uh, virtual at 7 p.m. And of course, our corporate prayer is every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Again, uh, we want to say thank you for your continued support of our ministry uh, uh, and, you, and you, your giving of your tithes and your offering, not only those who are members of church, but those who share in, in, in their offering and giving, whether you do it in person or by mail or online. Again, we are forever grateful and we say thank you. Tonight, our, our teacher is the Reverend Bobby Cumming, and he will be coming and doing our Bible study tonight. I pray uh, God blessing upon him and, and that uh, you would be blessed in the word of God tonight. Be blessed. Good evening, Mount Canaan. This is Reverend Bobby Cummings coming to you once again at Mount Canaan Missionary Baptist Church. I'm inviting you to another Bible study that we have here every week where uh, no other than our senior pastor, uh, Reverend uh, F. Douglas Young III, 
And tonight, we're going to get into some deep, uh, not necessarily say deep, but I want to encourage everybody that it is time for us to get bold because we need courage in the church right now. We need courage to stand up against all the wiles of the world. We need courage that people will understand that we're no longer going to be quiet, that we're going to walk in the boldness of the Holy Spirit that has been bestowed upon us through Jesus Christ himself. Let us pray. Eternal Father, we thank you once again for allowing this Bible study to go forth, Father. We continue to pray for all those during this pandemic, Father, that you're strengthening them in their walk of faith, Father. Believing in you, Lord, because I know through you all things are possible, Lord. There is nothing that you can't heal. There is nothing that you can't do, Father. Meet us in our place of need right now, God. I send a a prayer out to all the churches here in Pensacola and all those who are viewing on Facebook right now, God. And we thank you, Father, for your son, Jesus Christ. And we thank you for, for keeping our faith, God. And just bless this ministry right now, God. What's in your holy name that we pray. Amen. All right, let's get right into it. The topic of the day is walking in boldness, walking in boldness. So join me and we're going to the book of Acts. The book of Acts was written uh, in two parts actually. Um, Peter had wrote a portion of the first beginning of the book of Acts and then it blends in, into, into Paul's walk. Uh, later on. So let's go to the book of Acts and we're going to go to uh, chapter 4. The book of Acts chapter 4 and we're going to start at the 12th verse and it reads nor is there salvation in any other for there is no other name in which we must be saved. There is no salvation, no or no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. And for our theologian, the Greek word for saved is soterius. Soterius actually means delivered because I know I need to be delivered from something every day. Lord, uh, help me with some of these hellions around me. Lord, help me with, with some of my crazy uh, friends that's around me. Lord, help me, Father, because I know I need deliverance every day. And I say, Lord, if you don't step in, I might do something. So I know I need deliverance uh, daily. Uh, now when they, in chapter 13, I mean verse 13, now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were uneducated and untrained men, they marveled and they realized that they had been with Jesus. And seeing the man who had been healed standing with them, they could say nothing against it. Amen. Now when you are, here it is, you have, during this time period, you have different sects that were trying to take over the church. You had the Pharisees and you had the Sadducees. Now the Sadducees was a sect from the Sanhedrin council. Now the Sanhedrins were the people that were in charge of the church. But the Sanhedrins didn't believe in that Jesus was the Messiah. So they had a problem. Now, when you have a different belief system from what one group of people say and another group of people are saying, then how can you come together? Either you believe in Christ 
or you don't. So they didn't believe that Jesus had risen from the grave. They actually believed that someone came and stole his body. But we know better. We know that Jesus, in fact, did raise from, from the grave. So, but they are telling these guys that they are not allowed to go into the city and teach it. So down in the, in the verse below that, it says, but which they had commanded them to go aside out of the council and conferred among them saying, says, what shall we do with these men? For indeed, now watch this, watch this. For indeed, a notable miracle has been done. And then with them, it is evidence to all that dwell in Jerusalem that we cannot deny it. So here it is in their infinite wisdom, so they say, that they are noticing that these men had been with Jesus and they see the miracle standing with them. So they cannot deny any of this, but what they did were is confer amongst themselves and decided to try to run them out of town or threaten them with, with prison. But how many of us have been in, 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 in the company? You've been working for a company for a long, a long time, excuse me. You've been working with a company for a long time. But while you're in that company, you actually usually don't get in promotion and you really don't have any power. But these men, they know that they had been in the presence in the company of Jesus. But when you are in the company, you got the power. Because Jesus has walked in on this earth and he had gave his power over to his disciples before leaving and told them what I've done before you that you'll be able to do the same thing. But how many of us have been in the company but don't have the power, huh? So now we know that we have the power to go on and do what Christ has called us to do. So therefore we have to be bold in our faith, bold in our speech, and bold and let our faith be known. Let the Holy Spirit, the aroma of the Holy Spirit come out of you. Because when you let the Holy Spirit come out of you, then people cannot deny that you not have been with Jesus. So we have to maintain who we are. We cannot walk out here afraid to do what we're called to do. We can't be afraid. People don't want you to pray on your job. Drop your head and pray anyway. Go to the bathroom and pray. Do whatever you got to do. But you call on the name of God. Don't let anybody know, oh, he got to pray. No one sits at the table that I sit at and eat and deny me from blessing my food. Even if they don't want to do it. When I walk into the room at a lunch event, convention or any meetings and we're having a uh, dinner, lunch, or whatever it is, they know when they see me, nobody is going to eat because they know Cummins is going to pray before we do anything. I'm talking to the Sanhedrin Council now. So therefore, we maintain our walk with Christ. And there it says what? Let our little light shine. That's right. So when you see me, you're going to see Christ in me. So we have to be bold today. There's too many things that's going on that's trying to separate us, not only in racism, but in our spirituality. They're trying to separate us. They have taken prayer out of the church. They've taken everything down. But the thing that they always want to maintain is a pledge of allegiance to a country that don't want us in it. So how can I stand forth and say I pledge allegiance and all this other stuff, but at the same time, you're still not allowing me to vote? Lord, help me. Don't let me go there. So we have to be bold. It is time for us to take a stand of what God called us to do. And all the things that we've been going through all these 400 years, God has chosen a time as this for everybody to know who we are. I'm just not talking about black people, brown people, or any other race. I'm talking about for the people that have been depressed. There is a time for now for us to have courage so that we may go forth. Courage is a Martin King. Courage is a soldier in the truth. Courage is a, a Malcolm X. We have to have that same courage to let the people know that we will not just kind of sit down and allow them to keep treating us the way they're treating us. It is time for us to take a stand. 
No longer. No, no, no. And, and the way society is changing, man, now we've got to accept all kind of things that's going on out here. We got to set, accept uh, uh, homosexuals. We got to set, we got to set up systems for different bathrooms. I ain't never seen a Negro pregnant. So we have to be very careful about what we are doing, and we pray before the meetings. But at the same time, once they get the prayer out of the way, they don't want to talk about God no more. They don't want God in the workplace. This whole planet was laid on what God had purpose it to do. God had a purpose for each and every one of us. And the problem is that you don't want to accept what God has for you. Because see, no matter what you do in life, God prepares you to do something. He prepares you to go forth. But you got to go through some things in order for God to get you where he wants you to be. You just can't jump pop up and you just end your purpose. You've got to go through some things. Consider when we, when we do the consecration, consider when, when, we, when we do in, in, in some sex on first Sunday, we do the Lord's Supper. Consider the process that things that Jesus did with the bread. So we need to be more like bread because the first thing Jesus does is Jesus, he, 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 he took the bread. So that means if he took the bread, he had a purpose for the bread. Now, I remind you, it's still bread. But his, the purpose of the bread has changed. So then when he took the bread, the next thing he had, that he had to do was he prayed over the bread. Now, we are like bread. So the first thing we have to realize is Jesus has got to take you. And when Jesus takes you, he prays over you like he prayed over the bread. Then after he prayed over it, and then he broke it. So have you ever been broken in your life? But the thing about it is, even though you have been broken, you're still with God. Because remember the first thing you did, but when you was out in the world and you came into Christ, Christ took you in. So he took you. But in order for God to get you from where you are, to where he wants you to be, he has to prepare you because his ultimate goal is not for you to get into your purpose. The ultimate goal is for God's glory. So we can't get caught up too much and get the big head about our purpose and calling, but we have to realize that our purpose and how God calls us is for his glory. Amen. So we want to be where God wants us to be. It's why we have to take a stand today and do what is righteous and do what is right in the sight of God and take ourselves out of the equation. You know, most preachers preach and the first thing that they preach about is not preach, but their prayer is, Lord, take all of this out of me so that more of you will come out. It's not about me. I wish that when we were speaking up here, you know, back in the day, we weren't able to go on uh, social medias and we could listen to the word on the radio. I think that helped me so much because I didn't need to see the performance as so much as I needed to hear the words. And so now I actually went back in time and, 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 and I listened to preachers, uh, my pastor and some other people that I believe in who are going to give me and feed me with what I need, and all I need to do is hear them and not see them. So, but going back to the word, man, God has a, he's prepared us over these past 400 years. He was preparing us for this day. And we have to be ready when God wants us to put us in our purpose. But in order to get to your purpose, man, God, has to break that old man that you came to him with. And a lot of us today, you know what? There's a lot of exes in the church. You got ex-drinkers, ex-smokers, ex-whoremongers. A lot of exes. I'm an ex. And if you're not an ex, you might need to check yourself. Because we got ex everything. But now it's time for us to step up if you know your purpose. Now, if you don't want God to do anything for you, then don't ask God to do anything with you. 
And if you're happy and comfortable where you're at, God bless you and do whatever you're doing. But when, if you want God to put you where he wants you to be, you're going to have to go through some things. So before God does that, he's going to take you into his body. That's why it says in the bread, it says he broke the bread and he gave it to his disciples. said, this is my body. So we ingest it in a way symbolically that we're giving ourselves to Christ. So we have to realize that that's a preparation that God is doing. He's preparing us to walk in what he wants us to be. But we have to willingly, free will, give ourselves over to the Lord. And that's the one thing that I love about God. Because, see, he's not going to have dragging you down this aisle, kicking, hollering, and screaming, trying to save you. That's not how God operates. That's the one thing that he did give man in the beginning. He gave him free will, a choice to make his own decisions. But he supplied you with all, all the things that you would need to walk into your purpose. And when we don't walk in our purpose, and we're destroying ourselves. So it's time for us to wake up and find out what it is that God wants you to do. In today's climate, man, we are so busy running around, running from here today. And I suggest to you right now, if you sit down and write everything that you do every day and just made a list of the stuff that you're doing, you'll find out that you're actually busy doing nothing. And that's time that you can be spending with God. I'm guilty of it too. Because I know I got ADD and I know I, got, I can't be still. But when I know I hear the voice of God and he tell me, son, it's time to slow down. Son, you need to come and spend some time with me. Because there's a lot of times that I get away from God. There's a lot of times that God has me to do something, but I don't stick around long enough to get all the instructions, and then I get ahead of God. And you know when you get ahead of God, then you're walking on your own because then you're, you're, you're out of character. God can't use you like that. See, in the scriptures here, see, it says Moses, uh, 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 Mary and her husband were in the synagogue. And when the time was for them to leave, they went on a journey for three days. On the third day, they looked around and they realized Jesus wasn't with them. So they asked in the caravan, has anybody seen Jesus? They went from one person to the next person. And then someone suggested and said, well, why don't you go back where you left him. See, now sometimes when we get away from God, or, or some, some people will say you backslid or, or you fell down. But, but, but the thing about it is, if you go back where you left God, God will be standing right there with his arms wide open and telling you to come back, my son, my sister. Come back. You got ahead of me. And he'll be sitting right there on the throne with his arms wide open. God is always, is a merciful God. God's anger does not last forever. And God requires a few things. Just a few things. First, you got to repent from your sins. That's the first thing. And the root word, our pastor preached on this a couple of, couple of weeks ago, and it stuck in my spirit so much. He used the word re, R-E. Re is a root word. God wants to redeem us. It's the one number one thing. If God said, come back to me and I will redeem you. The other thing is God says he wants to restore. So when you're with God, man, whatever state you're in, he wants to restore your state back to Jesus' state. Not your state, but restore you back to Jesus. Because Jesus gave up his life for the world. To cover the whole world, sinners, whoremongers, alcoholics, drug addicts. He covered all sins for all time. But our decision is that we have to be bold 
and start living according to what God will have us be. So I implore you today is to figure out what your purpose is. Because see, I want to be like bread. One thing about the bread, when he picked the bread up, the bread didn't ask where it was going. But when you in Christ, I know that I trust God enough to know that wherever he's taking me is better than where I was. Now, even though when he takes me, he prays over me and he broke me. Now, you got to go through some broken things in your life. When God breaks you, things have got to fall off of you. Bad habits, bad language, uh, 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 gossiping. There's so many things. That's why God breaks us. I preached some time ago that God has to kill you in order to use you. I made some people mad, but at the end of the day, you understand God's breaking you. He's killing off those old bad habits, man. Nasty attitude, bad language. God has to break you in order to get the aroma of the Holy Spirit out of you. And once that happens, God will redeem you and restore you. Because he wants you to return back to him. Because you came from him. So let us concentrate on, on being what God called us to be. And find out what your purpose in life is today. Because God is an awesome God. No matter what I've been through in my life. I always know at the end of the day. No matter how broken I am. Going through divorce. Kids hooked on drugs, lost my job, don't have no money. But guess what? When God took the bread, he prayed over the bread, and he broke the bread. But you know what you realize at the end of the day? You're still in his hands. God still has a purpose for you. Even though you're broken and messed up, God is right there. No matter what you're going through. You're in his hand. Amen. I want to thank you all today for joining us for a Friday night Bible study. I look forward to seeing everybody on Sunday. God continue to bless us and keep us. Heavenly Father, we thank you right now that you've allowed this word to go forth. Father, may it touch somebody. May someone receive it from their hearts and to their souls, Father God. And people, if you don't have a church home, Find your church to join. Find you somewhere so you can hear the word of God. The word of God is coming forth. People are coming to the realization that they cannot exist without God. And if you're not saved, you need to find your church and open up your heart and get saved. It is very simple. God said, those who believe in the enemy shall be saved. The thief on the cross had that one moment. That one moment changed just like that because he believed in who Jesus was. And Jesus told him from this day forward, you shall be with me in paradise. And that sounds mighty fine to me because I want to be in paradise with Jesus. I thank you for your time tonight. God bless you.